So you know how you have your favorite pen at home. Perhaps it's a pen, it just does its job. It's a very cheap one that you can easily replace, but you always buy the same one because it's reliable. You know what it does and it just does that job really, really well. It's got one job to do, that's to write. And the Amoda 5 is very much like that pen. I want to introduce you to a new EV, one that could very well become a big threat to BYD and MG's international dominance. And it's by a brand called Cherry, and this is their new sub-brand, the Amoda E5. But what I want to know is, could this very well be your new affordable EV? Is this just a pretender, or is it a true contender in the market? Well, let's find out. Welcome to the Fully Charged Show. Like Fully Charged? Then you'll love our fun-packed Everything Electric Expos around the world. Next up, we're in London and Harrogate. Remember, energy and transport professionals go free on the first day. So you may have heard of Omoda's parent company, Cherry. They're one of the biggest automakers in China. In fact, last year they produced 1.3 million cars. They've got a joint venture with Jaguar Land Rover, so they know what they're doing. And then they've been exporting overseas since 2001, one of the very first companies to do it. So this is their new EV push into overseas markets. And I think it might be a real threat to the likes of the BYDs, MGs and Kia e Neros. However, I usually say these videos and I say, hmm, it's gonna come out in 18 months to two years. Not with this one, it's on the market right now. If I come to the front end of the Amoda E5, I can see a lot of inspiration borrowed from other car makers. For example, I see a lot of Lucid Air. I see a little bit of Neo, a little bit of Xpeng, and even a sprinkle of Kia as well. But it's not a bad thing for it. I think it's quite a striking looking car. Quite a big statement from Cherry or Amoda for their first EV. Now, they say this car is inspired by Star Trek and full of sports. Not really sure what that means, but it's quite futuristic looking in this studio setting. Oh, one other thing I want to say is that I think both BYD and Amoda need to go to a branding camp. Don't need to put your logo so big on the front. A little bit of subtlety would be quite nice. Coming around the side, there's not much in the way of features around here in terms of looks. It's a small crossover, but it does have 18 inch wheels. And these, although they seem a bit small, are actually better for your efficiency. And these hubcaps or wheels, alloy wheels, there to help with the slipperiness through the air. These are very aerodynamic, or so I'm told, helping you get more range from your battery. Ooh, it's got a good feeling, that. That is your charging port. AC, DC charger inside there. But what I'm always blathering on about is this trickle down effect of all these seemingly luxury features which was not standard on a car just a few years ago, which is now on cars like this. This has v l as standard, up to 3.3 kilowatts of energy can be taken back out of the car to charge your rice cooker or your oven or whatever you need to charge. That's really good, it's as standard on this car. I love things like that. The other thing which is really important to mention is safety. You're probably thinking, mm, maybe it's compromised on safety at this price point for this car. Absolutely not, it's got a Euro five-star end cap rating. 380 liters in here, and you even get a little bit more space in here. Probably about another two liters in there. There's also a very small front at the front that has also about another two liters, would only fit your charging cable and maybe a bottle of drink. Now, if you fold down these back seats, you'll get an extra, or you get a total of 1,075 liters of space. I'm not gonna do the calculation here. So, in this area, it does very well. This is a complete and utter disaster. It's got no scissor doors. It's got no guitar strings in the door panels. What's going on, Omoda? The good thing is they haven't let their designers go for a champagne lunch before designing an interior. And in fact, this is a real highlight of this car. Yes, it's not the most premium of materials, but the feeling, the fit and finish of what is here now 
is actually really good. A mode of five customers have a choice of three interior colors. We've got this rather fetching kind of navy blue in here against this white, which I really, really like. There's no piano black, fantastic. Low washer fluid level, please refill soon. Good warning. I've got a heads up display as standard. I've got this curved screen in front of me, 12 inches I think. I've got Apple CarPlay, it's very responsive. Great touch buttons down here for my heating controls. Yes, yes Omoda, you got it right. You've got the right mixture of small screen and buttons. Buttons for my AC, buttons for my modes. Now, phone charging, I do have phone charging. Wireless as standard, up to 50 watts. It's got its own cooling fan, just in case you need to cool down your overheating phone. They've packed in so much in here. Just things that people need and things that people want rather than frippery and pointless features. This car's really good and actually quite surprising. I was not expecting this at all. Now this is not a cavern of luxuriousness in the back here, but I do have plenty of leg room, plenty of headroom, even space for my bobble. So that's good news. Now the other thing is the fixture and fittings in here are just as good at, as the front, but there's one feature which is very, very important and that I want to highlight to you right now, which is seat heaters, rear seat heaters as standard in the back with buttons, no screen, push one of those. I get a nice warm bum on this freezing cold day when I'm suffering from a cold. Also got cup holders. I can put my medicine in there later and luxuriously sit in here. Just look out the window, I suppose. The other thing is it does feel a little bit cramped because there's only one sunroof and it's at the front. There's no rear sunroof. So the back starts to feel a little bit like this and uh, it's not a nice feeling. But overall, it doesn't feel that bad. So this is a car which brings me down from the heady highs of 45 inch screens and ridiculous self-driving capability. This is much more what I want from a car and what probably most people want from a car, rather than all this silly frippery that we don't really need. The thing is, what I find difficult to understand is how Legacy Auto can't build something like this. Now, there's one secret about this car which I should probably tell you. The batteries in this car are BYD Blade batteries. So you know you've got the safety and the functionality. So it gives an efficiency of 15.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So pretty efficient batteries in this slippery body. And that's bogging telling me there's a van, truck very close to us. I can see myself, that's a little bit irritating. Perhaps you can turn it off. I haven't been able to find it in the menu just yet. This is not a car that begs you to stamp on the throttle because it's only got 150 kilowatts of max power from the motor. Got a fairly respectable over 400 kilometers of WLTP range. But this is, you know, this is your everyday car. It's what the Nissan, it's what Nissan should have built as the next Leaf. This is the next Nissan Leaf or the next VW Golf. Omoda have done it before them. And that's why Legacy Auto has to be very careful. You know what? It's actually okay if a car doesn't set your pants on fire when you drive it, if it doesn't have the latest headline grabbing features. In fact, this is more car than any of us will ever need. But if you wanna see another car, which I think was very impressive for the price, you can have a look at my BYD Atto 3 review over here.